In this video, we will be converting this ATX power supply recycled from an old desktop to a lab bench power supply that can output minus 12 volt, plus 3.3 volt, plus 5 volt, and plus 12 volt in under $10. Before we get started, I just want to point out that we will be dealing with mains voltages, so be extra careful. And we'll just ignore the other screwdriver symbol. For this build, we will need a couple of binding posts a mains rated switch, two LEDs, a toggle switch, and a ton of heat shrink tubing. I'm also gonna add a USB port, but that is completely optional. As this is a switched mode power supply, we would need a dummy load to keep it stable, so we will be using this power resistor. If you have just unplugged the power supply, let it rest for a few minutes, or connect the green wire to the ground which will start the power supply and discharge the capacitor. And let me tell you, this has a lot of power stored. I then went ahead and unscrewed the top cover. And disconnected the fan from the board. The next step was to cut half a dozen of these cable ties and the connectors. I then sorted all the same color wires together. And I think now is the good time to point out what all these colors mean. So the orange is for 3.3 volt, red is for 5 volt, yellow is for 12 volt, a blue is for minus 12 volt and black is for brown. The brown is the 3.3 sense volt wire which will be connected to the orange wire. The gray wire we won't be using. The purple auxiliary wire will give out 5 volt even if the power supply is not turned on but connected to mains. And the green wire is the power on wire. It turns on the power supply when it is connected to ground. I then trimmed the wires to a much more manageable length. After figuring out the dimensions of the component and where I want to place them on my top power sheet, I then marked the holes for the binding post, the LEDs, and the cutout for the USB port and the main switch. After pushing the switch into place, I desoldered the live wire, as seen here, and ran it through the switch back to the board. I then drilled the holes for the component marked previously. The best way to drill in metal is to use a smaller bit and then work your way up. Make sure to smoothen out all the rough edges with a foil. I then went ahead and attached all the binding posts. Now we will add the toggle switch. After figuring out a suitable place to attach the power resistor, I marked and drilled the holes. I used a bit of heatsink compound to make sure that there is a good thermal contact between the dummy load and the back sheet of this power supply. I secured the dummy load with two rivets. The next step was to strip the wires, save two red wires and three black wires. I'll tell you what that is for later. I then soldered this thingy which came with the binding post uh, to the wires. I used heat shrink tubes to cover the connections. I did the same with the other wires as well. Make sure to connect the brown 3.3 sense volt wire to the orange wire. If you don't have a hot gun for the shrinking tubes, just borrow your sister's hair dryer and set it to the hot setting if there is one. I then soldered current limiting resistors to the two LEDs, in this case it was 220 ohms. 
I connected an extra piece of wire to this purple auxiliary wire which then got connected to the USB port along with one of the three black wires which we saved earlier. Now the extra piece of wire which we connected to the purple auxiliary wire gets connected to the positive terminal of the red LED. I used two part epoxy to secure the LEDs and the USB port to the top cover. Solder one of the two wires which we saved earlier to the positive terminal of the green LED. Connect the negative terminal of the green LED to the switch along with the second black wire. I know it sounds all very confusing, but trust me, it's not. I'll put the schematic in the description. Now the green power on wire gets soldered to the switch. Now you should be left with one red wire and one black wire. These wires will be soldered to the dummy lock accordingly. To have a bit more working space inside the power supply, I mounted the fan on the outside. So the final step is to connect all the wires to the appropriate binding post and don't forget to plug the fan back in. Now before closing the top cover, just turn the power supply upside down and give it a good shake or two to make sure that all the debris left from soldering or drilling is uh, out from the board, we don't want that there. So now the moment of truth, hopefully nothing blows up. I'll just go ahead and turn this on now and the red LED should light up and it is. Also the USB port should be working so I'll go ahead and connect my power meter up. This is a USB power meter. To test this port I'll connect my power bank and this power bank should draw around 2 amps. And it is giving out around 4.8 volts at 1.7-1.8 amps. Let's turn the power supply on and check if all the voltages are within range. So the most left one should be minus 12 volt, 3.3 volt, 5 volt, and uh, 12 volts. While we are at it, let's just cover this suicide hole as well. Alright, let's print some labels. And there you have it guys, your own lab bench power supply in under $10. If you enjoyed this video and you think it was helpful, please make sure to go mains voltage on that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already for more awesome stuff. With that being said, this is Saad and I'll catch you guys later.